My name is Harrison Gerard. I'm in the graphic design program at Portland State. And my thesis is called Fallen Objects Collaborating with Artificial Intelligence in the Field of Graphic Design. So AI is the big buzzword right now. In every industry, people are trying to figure out how working with AI can make their life or their job easier. And this is especially true in graphic design, where there's a lot of fear that AI might take over design jobs and the field will no longer exist. But a lot of people, myself included, are really excited about AI and machine learning, and we're incorporating it into our work and our art. So up until recently, it's been hard to access AI as a layperson. Since it's improving so rapidly as a field, it's hard to get your hands on an accessible way to interact with it. This meant that the people using it for their art were also the people building and training the systems. They've been involved from the ground up. And in my opinion, this leads to work that's pretty mundane and similar. We've all seen these joke, I train an AI off a hundred hours of commercials, pages, and etc., where the only joke is that AI understands some, but not all of the material. And like any joke, the more you hear it, the less funny it becomes. The majority of AI art hasn't really progressed past this point either. We're still seeing this one-trick pony again and again. Helena Sarin is probably the most prominent visual AI artist, and her work revolves around her feeding AI pieces of her work and having it try to replicate it. The problem with this, in my opinion, is that it's just kind of boring. AIs just aren't good enough at this point to see what it is that makes good art good. AIs are great with generating things with a lot of rules, like human faces, but art doesn't have enough rules, so it isn't very good at it. If you feed an AI a thousand masterpieces, it won't generate infinite masterpieces. It'll output various surreal rectangles. There is something artistic, though, that AI is great at, the human language. GPT-2, the foremost public language model, was trained off of 40 gigabytes of internet text. That's the complete works of Shakespeare and the Bible six times over. It was a news item last year because of how good it is. It was so good, in fact, that they didn't want to publicly release it because they were afraid of how it might be misused. It isn't perfect, and it has an internet-y flair, but it's really good. So my thesis, Fallen Objects, started with Talk to Transformer, a website that allows you to really easily access GPT-2 and interact with it. My central idea was this. Instead of having the AI generate the pieces itself, which it was bad at, it could generate the ideas for the pieces, which it was good at, and then I would make them. So that's what I did. I started feeding it different prompts and saw what I could put in to get it to give me what I wanted. So my process went like this. First, I put in the initial prompt, usually an object, which I then fed to GPT-2, and it would give me a big block of text like this. I would read through it and make notes of what I wanted to include to try and make it a little less confusing for myself. So here, for example, I know the title, the parents, that it's about divorce, that it's haunting and powerful, and that confusingly, this book stars Hollywood darling Nicole Kidman, and also that it's set in the 80s. So obviously, there's some problem solving I have to do to get this to scan. So I might solve this one by having it be a now a major motion picture style book cover, and that way we can solve the problem of having Nicole Kidman on the front and it kind of makes sense. That kind of problem solving became the bulk of the project, trying to figure out how to reverse engineer these designs from the dreamlike ideas that AI gives me. And it led to some really interesting work. Here's a piece that was really popular that I called Open the Gate. So for this one, there was an easy part and a hard part. The bumper sticker is easy. I just threw up open the gate and themed it around immigration, which seemed plausible. The note was harder because I had to figure out A, what the timeline was, and B, why someone would leave a note about someone's vacation plans in the first place. So I ended up going this kind of cruel intentions bunny boiler route. As a side note, one of the hardest parts of this project was trying to get my handwriting to look different between pieces, a problem that I never fully solved. As I made the initial few objects, I made a few rules for myself that I held on to throughout the entirety. One, no cheating. 
that I could keep hitting that generate text button as much as I wanted, but I would never actually alter the text it gave me. Two, to use the prompts, I would try to use as much of the AI's text as possible, trying to make everything as lucid as possible. Three, a scanned aesthetic. This is a graphic design project after all, and I wanted it to look cohesive, so to that end, I made everything kind of scanned in looking. And four, aim for reality, that everything should look real, and that if I didn't tell people they were fake, they'd think they were just real objects I had scanned in. So as I went along, I found that I was spending a lot of time in Photoshop trying to get these fake objects to look real, and it turns out the best way to get things to look real is to really make them. For example, here's my piece which is a museum exhibit guide. Since I knew I needed some burnt coins, I found some scans of coins from the US Mint website and printed and cut them out. Then I burned them by hand and scanned them into a collage I made from Library of Congress photos. After I laid out the front and back, I printed them, used them as covers for a booklet of blank pages, and scanned the whole thing back in. So what started off as a digital project quickly became physical. I started soaking papers in coffee and tea to age them. I would dry them in my oven and iron them out to smooth them. I started scanning books to use as mock-ups and stickers and papers, and I borrowed a typewriter and a whole lot of other things. Throughout the project, I made 15 different displays, all of which I deployed on Instagram, which was great as it almost made it a performance art piece. I loved hearing people's suggestions and utilizing them, and a lot of the fictional names I used for authors or officials or etc. are anagrams of people who commented on different projects. So back to academics. Fallen objects present some first steps and a new way of working with AI, where designers use AI as a content collaborator instead of a content generator. Instead of focusing on getting the AI to produce the final work, it can help us produce the initial ideas. For a field like graphic design that relies so heavily on creativity and thinking outside the box, it's easy to get stuck in a mental rut. AI can work as a way to break us out of these mental routines by suggesting content that we wouldn't have thought of otherwise. As an art piece, it works by exploring what makes an object real, in that we are able to examine our own reflection more objectively. Since GPT-2 was trained on internet text, the responses it gives are reflections of the content it was fed. By making these prompts material, viewers are able to encounter something from their own digital subconscious. The viewer, encountering fake objects made to look real, is able to scrutinize them for both their appearance and their content. It's up to the viewer to decide what part of them is truly artificial. And that about wraps it up. Again, my name is Harrison Gerard, and if you'd like to look through the objects, you can view them either in the thesis or on my Instagram at h underscore s underscore Gerard. Additionally, the website collating all of them is fallenobjectsingular.com, uh, and it's still under construction, but should be operational by the time you hear this. So many people helped me do this project, um, but a big thank you to Liz Charman, my advisor, Roz Cruz and Meredith James, uh, my professors for Thesis 1 and 2, and Brianna Avery from the Honors College, who was always there for me every time I ran to her panicking that I did something wrong and wouldn't be able to graduate. So thank you, and I couldn't have done it without you.